What's going on everyone? Scott here. Welcome back to the channel. Michigan State versus Indiana 430 Sunday in Bloomington for the regular season finale for both teams and the last game to try to improve your seating for the Big Ten tournament for both teams as well. Uh, this Indiana team is one that seemed dead in the water. You know, rumors were swirling or seemingly there was smoke around wanting Mike Woodson out in Indiana. Uh, they had lost 8 of 10 and 4 in a row before winning 3 straight over Wisconsin at Maryland and at Minnesota. Indiana, similar to Michigan State, has struggled on the offensive side of the ball, only scoring 73.1 points per game. Uh, that's for good for 12th in the conference, and they also rank 12th in the conference in 3-point percentage at 32.8%. Now, they do get to the free throw line around 22 times a game, so that's something that Michigan State will have to keep an eye out for Sunday late afternoon there in Bloomington. However, they do turn the ball over 12 times a game, so that is something that Michigan State has succeeded at and been very successful at this year is turning teams over. Now, Indiana center Khalil Ware averages 16-10, and 10, 7 foot tall as a sophomore. Obviously, this has been a rough spot for Michigan State to defend, so watch out for him in this game. I'm curious to see... What we get here, obviously, we saw Xavier Booker start a couple games ago, and then we got uh, Maddie Sissoko back in the starting lineup for back-to-back -back games. I know against Purdue, that was more than likely, obviously, because of Zach Eady down there. He wanted someone bigger, you know, and maybe someone a little bit, you know, more built up to this point in their college career. Uh, so you went with Maddie Sissoko to try to contend with Zach Eady down there, as opposed to Xavier Booker, who obviously is still growing into his body. At this point in his career, but now that, and then obviously Matty Sissoko, you wanted to start him for senior night on Wednesday in the Breslin, but I'm curious now if we go back to Xavier Booker and, you know, since he has been getting more run lately, you know, will that continue and will he enter the starting lineup again? Now Malik Renew also averages 16 and 6 with Mackenzie and Baku averaging 12 and 4. Xavier Johnson averages 8 and 2, but overall he shoots 42% from three, so that is something to watch out for with a team that, that struggles at times from the three-point line, as we mentioned earlier. Now, Trey Calloway, who is a program guy, a senior, he serves to drink, throwing in five assists and a steal a game for the Hoosiers. But at, with their struggles from outside of the three-point line, outside of Xavier Johnson, they do shoot the ball well inside the three-point line. And obviously, a lot of that has to do with the paint presence from Ware and Reneu. And some other of the big guys that they have on the roster that can get into the paint and score. And obviously this, as we mentioned earlier, has been a spot that Michigan State has not defended well this year. So see how we go. We've seen a lot of Jackson Kohler the last couple games down there. And I think he definitely gives you, you know, your best offensive option down there in terms of being able to score in the paint. You know, Xavier Booker at this point in his career is more effective as a pick and pop scorer. So I believe we'll see a lot of Jackson Kohler in this game as well. But, you know, as, you know, we've kind of seen over the last couple of weeks, it seems like the Maddie Sissoko role has kind of been, you know, filtered out of the rotation. You know, we've been getting, you know, quite a bit of Carson Cooper as well. I think, you know, Coop is someone who understands his role. He doesn't, you know, try to do some a lot of things that he can't do, which sometimes we see with Maddie and with Jackson. And, you know, with Maddie, it's just stuff that we've seen throughout his career. You know, similar shots, you know, the, you know, hook shots that come up short or some of the other moves we've seen down there, they just haven't worked throughout his career. And I don't think it's effective shot for this offense, given that, you know, this Michigan State offense has been one that has struggled quite a bit this year. And then Jackson Kohler, a lot of the moves he does, I think he can you know, make those moves and there's moves that he's obviously made before in his, you know, high school career. But I think that right now, you know, given him coming off of an injury and still working his way, you know, back in my opinion, you know, when you jump in, you know, halfway through the year, I think it's hard to be completely right that year. We saw that with Malik Hall last year, you know, he had some flashes of some really good games, but, you know, he started the year, uh, or he got banged up during the year, excuse me, last year. And then, you know, wasn't ever fully 100%, but definitely had some major impact games. And I think, you know, Jax can have some major impact games here down the stretch. Xavier Booker, I'm curious to see how the staff adjust in case Indiana does defend him. How he was defended on Wednesday night in the Brez against Northwestern. They pretty much covered up every single pick and pop he tried to run. That's why he only had one attempt. 
Wednesday night, and obviously at this point, uh, at least we haven't seen to this point him be able to catch the ball in the paint and go to work, kind of like Jax does down there. You know, I do think that's something that he does can possibly get into his game. I just don't think that's something that we have right now at this point in his career and, you know, this late in the season that we'll probably see this year. I think that's something that we could see, you know, him develop even more during the summer and going into next year. Now, according to our friends at Bart Torvik, Indiana's ranked number 85 in the country. They're 17 and 13, 9 and 10 in the conference, and they have a shot with this three game winning streak that they've been on to get in the tournament, sneak in that tournament, especially if they, you know, win a game or two in the Big Ten tournament, no matter what the result is here on Sunday. Now, MSU, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion, I think that you probably have enough to get in after Wednesday's win against Northwestern, who right now is currently a tournament team. Now, for the Big Ten tournament, Michigan State has a shot at a 6-8 through eight seed currently. The 5 seed is off the table. 6 seed, in my opinion, would be the most ideal. Obviously, not just saying that because, you know, obviously you want the highest seed, and that's the highest seed remaining. But if you win on Thursday, then you're either playing Nebraska, Northwestern, or Wisconsin as of right now. And then if you win that, and in theory, no upsets, you'd have another matchup with Illinois. And basically, just trying to stay away from Purdue as long as possible, even though we look like we belong in that game with Purdue for about 80-85% of the game about a week ago. And that was in West Lafayette too. Obviously, if Michigan State does meet Purdue again in the Big Ten tournament at some point, it would be a uh, neutral court. But going forward, it seems like we're saying it every game. We just got to see more consistency from the guys. You know, we've seen it from Malik Hall through pretty much his whole second half of his senior season here. Tyson Walker, you know, it was really Tyson Walker and Malik Hall that willed this team to a win on Wednesday night, on their senior night in the Brez. You know, we're going to need another good performance from both of them. But even Tyson, he hasn't had a good shooting day in a while. You know, he seems by every indication seems like he is a little bit hampered by the hamstring or some other injury. That's just what it seems like from the outside. Obviously, don't know anything. And obviously, he's not going to you know say anything. He's a tough kid. But, you know, we need a full game from A.J. Hogard and we need you know, Jaden Aikens to start hitting some shots again because going 0 for 7 is, you know, it just can't happen and you expect to win in this league and especially in a tough place to play like Assembly Hall. Now, Bart Torvik has this as a 71 to 68 win for MSU. That would be nice, but as I said, you know, Indiana three game winning streak to kind of turn their season around a little bit here and give them hope going forward into the Big Ten tournament and give them hope to, you know, try to win their way into the NCAA tournament. But Let's hope for an MSU win. We'll be back to talk about the game afterwards. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Go Green.